It's Parm King with another Foundry tip, and we're gonna talk about animating water using light, Foundry version 9 light, and that's it. No special modules, nothing else. Now, you might be asking yourself, why do I wanna to bother to animate water when there are some great animated maps out there where the, the, the map itself is animated? You're absolutely right, and I love those animated maps. I've used quite a few of those myself. However, as a game master or dungeon master on Foundry, we need to be conscious and aware of our player's experience. And not all our players may have high-end gaming machines that can handle the CPU load, the RAM, or have really good internet connection to be able to handle those animated maps. In my last campaign, I had a player, I had players from all over the world, but I had one player who had really low-end internet, and I had a couple of players playing on just average or low-end laptops, and I really wanted to have a fun gaming experience. So in this particular guide, the reason that we're animating the maps using lighting is that we can create a lightweight experience that can be played on any machine out there. So we're gonna jump into this. I'm gonna show you doing it on a battle map. We got two Theater of the Mind maps as well by James RPG Art. Excited to show you how I animate water on those. Now this first map here is by DM Andy. He's gracious enough to allow us to include this here in our video as well as in our Curse of Strahd uh, guides and our Curse of Strahd modules. If you're not aware of that, I do make Curse of Strahd modules. I've got 30 of them out there for Foundry. If you're interested, you can check them out. There's a list of them in the link down below and also to my Patreon page. And this is one of the maps I'm recently going to be using in uh, one of our uh, session guides. It's a ruined city with a frozen river. So how are we going to do this? The first thing we have here is we've loaded up our map in here and we're going to outline the river with normal walls and we're going to talk about the wall itself because the wall is the important part in how we set up the wall to make this work effectively. So I'm in the wall over here. I've selected the normal uh, walls and I'm just going to outline very quickly. I'm not going to do a perfect job of this, but I'm going to outline this, this river here. So we got it up to the edge. Boom, boom. There we go. Boom, 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 boom. I'm going to take it up to the top of the waterfall. Because we're gonna we're gonna animate this waterfall for our players as well. Now there we go. We got the the waterfall and the frost icy river. It's kind of breaking up, uh, all outlined with a normal wall. And if we take a player token and we put it on the map, we're gonna see that the player token won't be able. Let me reset the fog of war here. There we go. We can see the player token. When we highlight the player token, they're not going to be able to see in the water. There's a wall there. And so we need to fix this wall so the player can see through it. But when we put the light inside the water, that it, the light doesn't also flood out. And so this is really about setting up the walls to do exactly what you need them to do. So we're going to click back over on our wall icon again. And we're going to highlight it. And we're going to just highlight all the walls we just drew. Boom, I think I got them all. Yeah, they're all highlighted. And you're going to click on one of these dots here. I'm going to zoom in, and we're going to click on the dot, double-click on it. Now, movement restriction. We want the players to be able to move onto the ice, icy river. So we have no movement restrictions. Light restrictions, we want a light restriction, absolutely. Sight restrictions, we want no sight restrictions on there. And we're going to hit Update Wall. And what we've done is it looks like a glass wall, but the player can move through the wall without any problem. They can see through it and move through it. From the player's experience, the wall is not there. And that's really important because we want the light to be captured just inside the river. Now, one of the things I'm going to do, I do on all of my battle maps is I darken the lighting slightly. Right to create to allow the light to pop and to create a little bit of atmosphere. So I'm going to take this down to 25%, and we're going to make our first light in here. So when I put the light in here, we want to light the river. I'm going to pull this out, and you can see the light. I'm going to make the a little darker so you can see the light and make it really pop for you. I'll bring it up to 50%. There we go. And one of the things we got our light in there. We we expanded out there. We don't want to use bright light. When we're doing this lighting animating of water, we want it subtle. We want the players to notice that it's moving, but we don't want it to steal away from the scene. Lighting is 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 gotta be done in a in an elegant way 
in a subtle way to give the illusion of animation without being too overpowering for without the player to know that it's lighting. So we're gonna turn off the bright light, make that zero. I'm gonna just blast this up to like 60. Doesn't really matter because it's all walled in. And we're gonna pick out the color of ice. Now this is one of the important parts uh, of the process is you want to make sure that you're going to be picking out a color that matches kind of the color palette that you're working with based on the artist here in DM, DM Andy's map. So I'm going to click over here and I'm going to select, I don't know if the, the, the pop up for you, but I'm going to select kind of a, a lighter blue here. There we go. And you're going to see, wow, that's really bright. Well, we don't want it that bright, but I'm going to show you how we're going to make this work. What we can do, there's two ways we can do that. We can pop the color intensity way up, and then we go to the second menu, light animation, and we're going to make this a swirling fog animation. Now, what we can do is use the animation intensity to ratchet that back down. So we got a lot of the color in there, the color intensity is up, and we've brought the light uh, animation intensity down. Now, I want to push the speed up a little bit more so the ice looks like it's cracking and flowing. And here's one of the great things about version 9. We have these advanced lighting fe features, and that's what we want to use is because we want to really make this look like breaking ice. And we can do that with, uh, we can do that. I think one of the ones I like to do is, let's try, I think it's internal color burn. Nope, that's not it. Let's try another one here, external, yeah, there we go. So the external color burn gives us this kind of feeling like it's icy, it's water. You can, if we look at it from a higher perspective, everything's kind of slowly moving uh, on the ice there. So we've got our ice there, that's done. This is what our player experience is gonna be. They're gonna see this this river here, and it's blue, and they can they can walk right across it, right? Now they got, they're on top of it. You can see that the tokens color burn. We can change that. Let's change that so that doesn't happen to the player. And we're gonna go to the, um, we'll go to, um, we're just gonna use the adaptive lighting for now. And we can do some other things here. We can do a background saturation, make it a little bit uh, contrast here. And I'm gonna pop the background shadows up just a little bit so it looks a little bit more transparent. Update the light. There we go. So we've got this, you can see it slowly changing. So the ice is cracking uh, and they, they can certainly cross the, the river here, but we've kind of given a feeling of animation just through lights. You can see it's a subtle change. We don't want it to blast anything out, but we want this waterfall here to be a little blown out, a little uh, exciting. So we're gonna put another light and you can just layer lights on top of each other right here on the waterfall. And we are going to, again, take off the bright light in the middle. We're going to leave it up at uh, 40. We're going to pick more of a white, whiter color. I'm going to still stay in the shade of blue. But I'm going to push it over to the white side. And again, don't worry about it looking like this because we're going to go over to Swirling Fog again. And I'm going to push the Swirling Fog up big time. I'm going to bring down the animation inten intensity. And now we've got something. I can actually go here and do... Um, uh, invert absorption. So it's like over the top here. Let's take out that light animation a little bit more. Actually, I think we don't want to do invert absorption. Let's try um, high absorption there and turn this down just a little bit. There we go. So we've got this and it looks like there's there, we've got a waterfall and we've got the river there. So the players can see there's a waterfall flowing up there. You got some sound effects. And they're like, yeah, we want to cross this ice. It looks a little dangerous here. So there we go. You can walk right across the ice, but we've created uh, some animation to the water. It looks like, you know, by making that light pop a little bit, we can see it slowly changing. You can see the animation at the top with a fast swirling fog really makes that look like there's a waterfall up there. And meanwhile, we've got this icy cold. I mean, that looks cold. I don't be want to walking on that ice. I don't know about you. All right, let's go to one of our theater of the mind maps right here. Now, in the theater of the mind maps, um, and this is actually ironically the very first foundry tip I made over a year ago was making theater of the mind maps. This is a gorgeous one by James RPG Art. Again, he's gracious enough to allow us to include the WebP versions of these 
in our foundry modules for Curse of Strahd. This is a Curse of Strahd one that he's done. Uh, it's the bridge at the crossroads. Um, but he makes these in animation and they're gorgeous. However, if you want to keep a light client and a, and a light experience for your players, so the maps are fast to load, but you want to make it pop with a little bit of animation, we're going to show you how to do that with this one here. So in this particular one, the first thing I need to do in Theater of the Mind Maps is when I go to lighting, I turn off the fog of war and the token vision, right? Because we don't need a fog of war. We're looking at this um, from, a, from a different perspective, not a top-down battle map. And so we're going to bring up the light, darken the light a little bit here. I'm bringing it up to 25%. And we're going to do the same thing. We want this river to look like it's rushing around here. So I'm going to go over to the walls. I've got the wall section here. And I'm going to just really quickly not do this as well as I probably should. But we're going to put this walls right here. And I'm just going to outline where I want the water to look like it's moving quickly there. Boom, boom. It's a little over the edge, but for, uh, for this kind of demonstration, will be fine. Again, what we want to do is we want to highlight this. We want the players to be able to maybe go into the water, so we don't want to put a movement restriction on it. So you put none. You can leave movement restriction on it, but maybe you don't. Um, and we don't want to have any sight restriction. Those are the two ones, movement restriction and sight restriction. It's going to turn to a glass wall that the players will allow to move through, however, the glass wall is going to restrict light, just like we did last time. Now we're gonna put the light in here, and we're gonna just zoom it out like that. Again, we won't wanna use bright light. We're gonna use it, I'll just ramp this up to 40, it doesn't really matter. And I'm gonna pick out a color that kind of matches the color of the water here. So it's, we've got a blue color, but it's kinda of dirty blue, a little dusky blue here. And we want that to fit in there, there we go. That looks pretty good. I'm going to push up the, the color and lighting a little bit. Again, I'm going to use the swirling fog again. And I'm going, to, I'm going to move it a little bit quicker there. And there we go. We've got that in there, and the water looks like it's moving. And that looks great. I actually really, really like that. So let's bring our character in there and see what the character experience is. So it looks like the water's moving. Now, we can make it, we can put another light on top of it. I think I'm going to do that. I think I want the white to pop a little bit more. I'm going to actually take this one that I already have. I'm going to hit Control C and then Control V, copy it and put it on top. And I'm going to change this one to a slightly different color, make it a little bit uh, grayer. There we go, a little bit whiter. And in the animation, I'm going to bring down the intensity and I'm going to use the, um, the external color burn. And that's a little bit too much for me. Yeah. It's a little too much for me. Let me try the, uh, a lot of this experimentation invert process. There we go. That looks a little bit better. Maybe I should stay with the external color burn and then just ratchet down my lighting a little bit. There we go. There we go. Now check this experience out from the player, right? The water, you, you've given a subtle illusion that the water is actually moving, right? And so you don't want it to distract from your role playing and your storytelling, but you want the players to go, oh yeah, wow, that's kind of cool. The water's, you know, looks like it's moving. And it really makes the water, it differentiates the static artwork of water by giving it some lighting animation than the rest of the area. We got one more of them we're gonna do here. And this is the waterfall, again, from James RPG Art. This is the Tesser Falls for Curse of Strahd. I really like this one. Again, his animated ones are gorgeous, but again, your this file here, I think this the size of this file, let me just take a look here. Uh, the size of this file that I have, it's, it's pretty small. Let me just show you, let me just take a look how small this file is, because I make them pretty small. This is, a, this is 200K. <laughs> this is a 200K picture um, in WebP format, 18 by 1,000 uh, pixels. So 200K to load for your player versus, you know, uh, you know, 30, 40 megabyte animated map or, or an 8K high resolution map. And we're just going to throw some lighting on here and make this look really, really cool. So again on here, when you're doing these theater of the mind maps, I take the lighting, make sure to turn off the token vision and the fog of war. We're going to darken it up a little bit so the light pops. And we're gonna draw out this waterfall. So let's do that with our lines. We got our lines here. 
and we're going to hit it. Just, I'm gonna, I might not do a great job of this, so just bear with me. And we want to go out here because we want to see that spray. You know, the waterfall's coming down, spraying. We got the river here. There's the trees you're looking down over the big, the big bridge at the Tesser Falls. Just need some, maybe I should record my voice as the <laughs> waterfall. There we go. Uh, let me make it a little, there we go. Not perfect, but it's it'll, it'll, it's going to do for this. It's going to give you the idea of what we want to do here. So we're going to get the light, and we got to move the light in there so it fills up that whole thing. Again, uh, this one, I might want to use some bright light in here because I want this to pop down here. So I might have this at, at let's say, 16. You should see the area at 16, and then push this out to 40. And uh, we're going to make this white. Kind of pick the blue hue and then move it into the kind of the white realm a little bit. There you go. Update that. And now we're going to go back there and we're going to, again, we're going to put in swirling fog. Now look at that. Look at that. Right. Now you can't, I mean, look at you, you. We've created some animation already with that. We could probably make it a little bit brighter there. There we go. Make it even faster, brighter. There we go. So now we've got this waterfall down here. You know, it's just kind of... We can fix some of these walls if we don't like these walls and just back them up a little bit. All right, there we go. We got this. This is starting to look good. All right, let me just fix this a little bit because I'm a little anal with some stuff. All right, we want to do the same... We might not want to do the same thing for the entire waterfall, but we want to do it for part of the waterfall. So what we're going to do here is we're going to highlight this. We, won't, we don't want the players jumping off the bridge. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn everything on. So restrict movement. Uh, we're going to leave that normal, but we're going to restrict sight. We're going to put none. So the players won't be able to jump in here. This is just going to use a, a regular glass wall, except for it's restricting light. Now I want to add another one in here to really make this area down here more blue. Make it pop. Have more of a blue, and I'm going to use this one. I'm going to turn off the bright light, just kind of about nine on the dim vision. We're going to do more of a blue, uh, colder blue color, a little darker here. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't look so bad with the light animation. Again, we're going to do a slowly, a slower, a slower fog down here. We're going to ratchet this down just a little bit, and what this is doing is adding a little bit more color to our palette, giving it like, you know, it's, it's, you got all the, the mist up here and now you got the blue river kind of flowing down here. And so our players are gonna have this really fun experience. They're gonna be here and they're gonna see this and they're saying, oh, we, we can talk up here and have, do our role playing moment and they can see this waterfall. All of this done is just with foundry lighting, really lightweight for your players, super easy to do, really makes some things pop. We got a river here and we got our, we got our icy, we got our waterfall in the top down map and the icy, uh, the icy river. I really hope you like this tip. Please, please make sure if you did, make sure you give me a thumbs up. You know, that helps me out, gets my video out to some more people. If you like this and want to be notified of my next video, Foundry tip, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Until next time, this is Parm King signing off, and may all your roles be critically successful.